Hey everybody! So uh, today um, I'm working on basically writing out some of my music that um, either needs just a, a little bit of a touch-up um, or needs to actually be completely written out uh, for uh, hopefully some upcoming concerts. Nothing is still set in stone for certain, uh, but there's definitely some stuff in the works here. So I'm looking forward to sharing that with you soon. Um, and uh, in the meantime, I have to find an accompanist, someone that can play my music. And uh, since I've never had to do that before, I've been able to skate away with, with a lot of like simple things, uh, like sometimes not even writing out my music at all. So um, like uh, for a goodbye for now, I didn't uh, have any of that accompaniment written out. Uh, and, and so this is um, what I'm gonna do today is just show you some of the small stuff uh, that I've been working on. Uh, so in fact, just a little bit ago, I was uh, working on Time Together and the very ending of that piece uh, was completely not written out. Uh, and I'll show you some of the behind the scenes of um, how, how I go about going through this, but it's a lot of play, stop, um, sometimes play on the piano a little bit uh, <laughs> to make sure I've got the notes right and the rhythms right uh, and then um, fitting it all in. So yeah, let me show you. Okay, so here is my piece Time Together. Um, as you can see, we've got the piano part and also the trombone part uh, over here. So piano's on bottom, uh, trombone's on top, which is a very common way uh, for those of you that don't see what we'd call a score. All right, uh, on top of that, uh, since I have other people that uh, will hopefully be playing my music, you wanna give them as much um, understanding of what this piece is. Um, <laughs> Uh, that we're playing here. So um, you want to tell them, hey, this is the, the basic tempo marking that we have. All right. Uh, and then also I have a, uh, well, an actual, another tempo marking, right? Uh, so this is called tempo rubato. Rubato uh, means stolen time. Uh, and so uh, you can actually hear a really good example of that right here at the beginning here with these notes. Uh, and so um, what I will do here in general is that I will kind of steal time out of these beginning notes and uh, it will be given back here towards the end. So in general, these uh, two measures here should last, you know, maybe eight to 10 seconds. We'll just say 10 to keep it nice and happy. And so um, this measure will go a little bit faster and the other measure will go a little bit slower. So maybe this measure here is about four seconds long while the second measure here is about six seconds long. So um, here is a nice rigid tempo, one and two and three and four and, all right? But listen what I do with these notes uh, to make some of them faster and then some of them slower. And again, that's an example of tempo rubato. Here we go, three and four and. And it would continue on there. So uh, that's basically what we're doing. Now, uh, in this music here, um, I had absolutely bare bones is what I found. There were no uh, pedal markings whatsoever. Um, and there were no dynamic markings of, of any kind telling anybody how loud or soft to play. Uh, I've never really needed that up to this point. And so um, those were things that I had to add in. Um, and so as you can see, we have this uh, fantastic word simile, which means uh, in Italian, similar. Uh, so, um, you know, I'm not going to write out, hey, this is where every place you need the pedal. Most people know how to do that. <laughs> Sorry, excuse me for my daughter here. Uh, I have to re-record this, so. Uh, <laughs> but anyways, um, and same thing with these uh, tempo markings, uh, sorry, these dynamic markings as well. Uh, once people get the gist of what you're looking for, uh, it's very easy to say, hey, that's uh, how this is gonna go. So, uh, the l I wanted to mention uh, one more thing here at the very end of my piece. Um, was this written out section that kind of took me a little while to, to put together. Um, so I've never needed to write this out. Uh, and in the best of circumstances, I would actually much rather leave this um, maybe with just a chord and a mention to improvise uh, towards the end. However, um, you know, I don't know how many times I will get to work with my accompanist, how much time they have to work on these, these pieces. Uh, and how much time we, we get to know everything together. So to give them something that's very exact and what I can expect and they can expect when we're on a stage in front of people uh, is really helpful. So um, I had to write this out, starting right here. It's really just a 
downward descending trill. Uh, but that's, uh, I, I'm not really even sure how to necessarily notate that any other way than uh, the way that I did here. So that took a little bit of time to kind of figure out what I did there and how to make that work and also make it uh, understandable for uh, an accompanist to just learn hopefully quickly as well. All right, you'll notice that a lot of this music is also in purple, while I have a couple of notes that are actually in black here, and that is due to what we call two voices, or, you know, we can do more than that, but uh, for this specific piece, um, <laughs> and uh, in this measure right here, um, we have two things going on. We have uh, a, a note right here that is sustained for two full beats, but I also have some color notes that happen uh, after that, and so... Um, that's where uh, so some of our notation kind of breaks down just a little bit. How do we hold a note out while also having other notes above it? And it's what we call uh, uh, multiple voices, two-part voices, all happening in the same thing here. Uh, so uh, the, the first part of this, da, 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 and then I add in these last three notes. Uh, those three notes were actually missing from my original um, <laughs> transcription of this, this piece here. Uh, so I actually have to go in and find out where some of the other stuff is and also fill out some of these chords. Because uh, like I said, I did some of the most bare, <laughs> bare things when I wrote this thing out. Uh, so here we go. We're going to listen to just kind of from the beginning and I will listen to where some of the music is missing. All right, here we go. three notes all right that was easy uh sometimes having a good ear is helpful i sometimes have to guess harder than that but uh so now i have to add in the rest oops <laughs> i have to add in the rest uh and then this one oh my gosh i'm sorry folks <laughs> all right uh and then finally the three notes here now um let's see Okay, what I'm gonna do here, that's really high up on the piano. Um, if I zoom out on this piano here, this might help you see just a little bit. Uh, so technically, the, the notes that we're looking at here um, are way, yeah, way up here. Dun, 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 all right? And in fact, if I wrote that in, it's way, way up there. And that takes time uh, for people to figure out what note that is, because even I would have to be like, ah, oh, I think that's an, an E flat or an F. Um, so I'd have to think about it. So I take it down an octave here uh, to where it's a little bit more legible. All right, I'm gonna write in those three notes. And then on top of that, um, I'm just gonna say, hey, um, these three notes right here, I want to uh, play that up an octave. So we put in this fantastic little sign that says, hey, uh, play these notes up an octave. Octave means eight keys above where it was previously, which happens to be the very same key that we're playing, like from C. Notice how, I'll, I'll choose this note here. This note is D, and it's in between two uh, black keys. And we just go up eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Brings us to another D up. All right, uh, and so it's just a nice, perfectly lazy way of writing out the, that note uh, and where we want it to be actually played uh, without having to, to make everybody think about what notes they are uh, by um, putting it way above or below the staff. In fact, that's actually what's happening here with the left hand as we look at this very next section. Um, both of these notes would be really low. They'd be pretty legible uh, when it comes to the left hand. I'm at least pretty good uh, with recognizing um, super low ledger line notes. 
So, uh, anyways, we're going to continue on here, see what else is going on. listen back on this one because that might be a little different. I might have added in an extra note that doesn't need to be in there and actually kind of deters from some of the colors we're looking for. Yeah, I think that's what we're looking for. All right, good. And then we just, I think this next section here is going to be fun. Yeah. Okay, I'm missing a ton of notes inside of these chords. Easy enough. Okay, so we've got that. Boom. Now, what's the second chord? I think it's this, but now I have to check. So I, that's that. So now I just have to fill this out. Luckily, uh, this section here is pretty repetitive. So once you figure out the first uh, two chords there, you just have to fill that out. There's a couple of ways to do this, uh, but I will start this way. Let's see, so. So the first chord in the next measure stays the same, while in the second chord we have a new sound, and it's actually a really important uh, sound here. Um, that F, that top note there, I think I can single it out um, right here. This note is actually a new sound. So previously it sounded like this. also belongs a little bit more with this uh, D flat that we have in here. So uh, definitely worth making sure that that's the notes that we have there. Because um, otherwise I'm playing literally different chords. Oops. See, here is my terrible... See, so you got to pay attention when, when you're doing stuff. So... Um, but yeah, so that is basically what we have to work on here when we're... Um, when I'm uh, trying to do this music uh, to make sure that my accompanist uh, knows what's going on. Perfect timing, so uh, we'll call this good for right now. All right, so as you can see, getting my music to the next level where other people can participate with me is kind of a, a painful um, exercise, right? It can be a, kind of a long process. So uh, originally when I wrote all this music out, um, first of all, I didn't know I'd be doing anything like this. Um, and there's not a lot of reason to put in that much work uh, for something that, um, <laughs> There's, there's not a lot of incentive, right? Uh, and so um, it is it is a lot of work. I've been working on this a lot. I, I've had to write out a couple of songs completely. I've been, I, let's see, right now I've, I've, I think I've completed six works here where I've kind of gone through everything. One of the other benefits though uh, from this is that I can actually sell this music um, like on my website, uh, other people can buy this music or I could send it to a publisher, um, but um, I've never had to do that before. Um, who knows if there'll be interest, but I can start marketing it. Uh, as you can see, it was a, a fair amount of work that I wasn't really interested in doing. Uh, and your know, chances are, you know, you, you only make a couple of sales a year. Uh, and so, you know, uh, putting in that much effort for a really small return is, uh, I'm, I'm getting tired of doing stuff like that overall, mostly. 
So uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited that I'm finally getting this music fully written out to a degree. Um, one of my, my biggest things that I like doing um, is leaving the, the performers to make some choices for themselves. So I'm a little disappointed in some respects that, you know, I'm going into so much detail, but it's important to make sure that um, whoever I collaborate with uh, that will be playing alongside me, uh, will it will be a very clear product that all they have to do is just figure out the notes. And when we get together, it's just ironing out the small stuff. So uh, that's just uh, part of the, the process with uh, specifically where I'm trying to take this uh, product right now. So uh, thanks for watching. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.